show you how to shade using your charcoal pencils. First thing that you want to do is make sure that you don't use the tip of the pencil unless you're drawing a contour line. Uh, use the side of the charcoal pencil and when you do it, once you put it down, don't lift up until you're done with the area that you're shading. So what you want to do is with even pressure draw or pull the charcoal pencil towards you with even strokes and what when you stop rotate the pencil this will maintain a continuous point on your charcoal what you are doing is creating a continuous gradient a smooth even application of the charcoal now one thing you don't want to do is just sit and scribble really, really black. Very few areas in your drawing are going to require this kind of application. In order to create the illusion of three dimensions, you're going to need to build up areas with continuous layers that gradually get darker and darker, and at the same time the shapes get smaller and smaller according to uh, what is being drawn, basically, especially reflections in shiny objects. So as you gradually get darker and darker, you want to put a little bit more pressure on the pencil, but not so much that it becomes absolutely black right away. So as you can see, I'm getting darker and darker in a smaller and smaller area. You can blend these areas together by overlapping edges and just moving back and forth to achieve a seamless blend between areas. You want to save your darkest darks for last. That's why we are going and building from a middle tone or a light tone to the darkest darks. All right, I've carefully drawn using a medium charcoal pencil the objects that I'm going to render. Step one in rendering is the same as when we were doing the sketching uh, with the large charcoal. Dividing the objects initially into their light areas and dark areas. The areas that are going to be dark are going to receive the charcoal pencil initially. The areas that are light are going to maintain the lightness of the paper. So basically you are doing what is light and what falls into dark. You want to use an even light tone initially to start. So I'm going to start with the pair. As I showed you, you want to create a very, very light, even tone when I showed you how to use the materials. Going back and forth. If you are worried about smudging your drawing, I recommend that you use, as I am doing here, a piece of paper towel or a Kleenex to put under your hand. That way you will keep your skin and skin oil off the drawing so that it won't work its way into the paper. You want to do this for each of the objects in turn. You may also very, very lightly, if it does not confuse you, do a very light lay-in of your shadow shape. This is step one. Now what I'm going to do in this demonstration is show you on one object and I'm going to stop the demo and go do it to the other objects and I will resume again. The next step, once you have the basic lights and darks put down, is to take these large general shapes and start breaking them down into smaller and smaller shapes that create roundness of form. 
Again, you'd work from general shapes to specific shapes. So on this pair, I can see that right along the edge where the shadow meets the light is the beginning of the core shadow. And I'm going to initially lay that in with a nice even tone. to establish it. So what I'm doing is adding another dimension of darkness to what I have initially established. Now there is a small amount of reflected light that is hitting the cloth and bouncing up into the pair. It generally covers this area right here. So I'm going to go with a, another pass over this area, but I'm going to make sure that it's very light so that I don't flatten out the object and I'm able to better represent the reflected light that is hitting the object. So I'm using even passages. I'm using as much of the side of the charcoal pencil as possible. All the time, gauging what is going on, I see where the bottom of the pair, right here, the whole of the bottom of the pair has a contour that runs right along the bottom here. It is darker than the reflected light. I'm going to initially put that in. I'm also going to start at the bottom of the pair very gently putting in the occlusion shadow. If you remember, the occlusion shadow is where the object rests on a surface, and it is the one area of the object that receives the least amount of light. So now that I've done this, I'm going to go back and start darkening the core shadow, adding another layer of darkness to this, changing the shapes according to what I see, breaking them into smaller shapes. Trying to maintain an even application of the charcoal. If you've noticed at this point of the drawing, I have not done any erasing. And in most instances, you're really not going to need to erase very much because you're being careful and you're going slow and you're only putting charcoal where it needs to go. So this is what I mean by breaking these shapes into smaller and smaller shapes. I'm also maintaining the contour of the object so I don't lose it very, very lightly. And you have to start making comparisons. How dark is the core shadow that I've already put versus what I'm creating for the reflected light and just the general shadow. Each time I put down a new layer of darkness, I have to go back in and gauge if the general areas of shadow, the areas that aren't going to be dark, almost black, how dark do they need to be? 
more than likely I'm going to have to go back in and darken them a little bit. And you use surrounding shapes to tell you just how dark you need to get. For instance, the core shadow of this pair is not going to be as dark as the cast shadow of the pear and the salt shaker uh, to the left of it. So I have to make sure that once I have established this area, I start going back in with another pass very delicately in my shadow shapes to add another dimension to that area. And you do this throughout your drawing. I am an advocate of working the whole drawing at once. There are some people who, who like to start with one object and just render it and work their way out. That's okay. I prefer to work all the objects at the once and bring them up to the same level because that way you can maintain a consistency in your drawing. Now that I have established these shapes, I have to look at the pair and look at what falls into the light area. Now I've mentioned this to a few of you already in your own uh, individual critiques that despite what you see the photograph lies and what you think is white actually has value. It's going to be very apparent when we get into the uh, salt and pepper shakers but just because this area is really light does not mean it's the white of the paper. It does have value even if it is a very very light value. So I'm going to have to very delicately and what I'm doing here is I'm blocking in areas that are receiving direct light which creates a highlight. I want to make sure that those stay the white of the paper. So now very very lightly and I would use the medium pencil for this very 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 lightly. Start adding another dimension. These are called the half tones or mid tones. They are basically representing the true value of the object itself. very gently. And in a couple of areas I can see that it goes from a dark area where there are surface changes on the pair I'm going to attempt to blend those areas, make it as seamless as possible. These areas that are still white, they are going to receive value, but not until I've established the rest of this area so I know just how light these need to be. So what I'm going to do next is the same thing on the salt shakers and the small vase and once I have reached the same level of uh, completion as I have done on this pair I will uh, come back and show you the next step. Alright so as you can see I've taken the pair and the salt shaker to a very far state of completion. I did that because I want all of these objects to 
uh, balance against each other, but also contrast really well. Because one of the things that I'm going to address is I'm going to do the pepper shaker for you because it has a lot of uh, reflection and shininess that I noticed um, many of you have been having difficulty with. As I've stated to a few of you, the whites that you are leaving in your drawings are too white. If you look very closely at the objects that you're drawing, the white actually has some kind of value to it, especially like in this area. Um, pay very, very close attention. The whitest white is actually going to be your lights and highlights, like I've done on these other objects. So I want to show you how to, how to tackle those. Um, because these shadow shapes are also reflection shapes, they are reflecting objects that are nearby because the light is bouncing around, there are several degrees, degrees of difference in these shadows so that there is a lot of gradation going on. So, for instance, I'm going to start working this big dark block of color that has at least two or three different values in it. What I'm doing again, as I mentioned earlier, I'm establishing a medium tone and then I will gradually, because this darkens in this direction, I will gradually darken it and create a lighter transition from dark to light. Now there is a clear separation in here, but you want to make sure that it's fairly subtle. There's also a gradation going up from the bottom of this object that I need to establish. Again, notice that I have not yet put any real contour lines if, uh, as far as finishing contour lines. You want to save those for the end of your drawing, if at all possible. The only time that I am actually going back in with contour line is to establish shapes um, within shapes so I know where the boundaries are, but also because um, I, may, I may be in danger of losing say, the opening of the handle of this cup. So I have to kind of go back in and lightly put those boundaries back in so I can see where they go. But other than that, I have not put any hard edges into this at all yet. Now I am doing some very, very, very light finger blending just to get a nice smooth gradation. I don't recommend that you do it too heavily. Don't grind. I'm literally just dragging my finger across the uh, paper. Always lay your value down first before um, committing to um, smudging or smearing. In fact, I would prefer that you didn't, but in some instances you may need to. So as you can see, I'm breaking these larger shapes into smaller shapes. I'm still using a medium pencil here. I have switched back and forth between medium and the soft. Whatever uh, your pencil is, if you're using the Primo pencils, the medium would be the B pencil and the soft would be the 3B pencil. But be very, very careful because those pencils tend to darken very, very quickly.
Now I'm going to move up to the next tier, the, the little uh, decorative bumps. I'm going to tilt this a little bit. It's also advisable to use your eraser to pick out any shapes that may be getting value that aren't supposed to or need to be lightened. Try not to erase too hard. It's a good idea to kind of pick at it with the kneaded eraser. Again, try to use as much of the side of the charcoal pencil as possible. Try not to use the point except for contours or very, very, very small areas. The area over here that has a really intricate pattern will have to be hand drawn in right from the get go. You can't really, this is a very small area that has little droopy reflected lines. It looks very organic. You need to put that in as you see it and establish it pretty firmly. That is, doing it very definitely so that it stays where it's supposed to and doesn't change, it doesn't uh, need anything else, you just lightly put it in. This area right down here, it looks like I drew it incorrectly, but I didn't. There's a bit of light that's hitting this and bouncing up, and the reflected light is so severe that it's actually causing an unusual shape. 
So I'm going to make sure that stays there. However, there is an area on this. It's not white, but very, very light. So I'm just going to pull that area out. Now, as to the dome of the pepper shaker, I've, I noticed that some of you have drawn this and you've let, left this completely white. If you look at it closely, the only area that is really white is this area right up here. The rest of it has a very, very light value to it. It is off-white. Okay, so you need to very, very delicately put something in there. And as it gets towards the top, it gets lighter. But at the base, right where this white area is, it has darkness, or at least darker. And there are a few areas where there is a small amount of reflected light, or not reflected light, but a highlight that connects with this area here, that connects with this area here, that also drops down a little bit. Now I'm going to switch to a softer pencil to start establishing the stronger darks. Putting in coarse shadows, creating gradations. You can switch back and forth between pencils. Now, as to handling contours, you're going to want to use a fairly sturdy, sharp um, charcoal pencil and make sure that it's got a good point on it. And, like you did with the contour line drawing, you have to look for areas that have sharp, hard edges that blend into areas of shadow that stand out in relief how are you going to handle these shapes? Well, for one, I would <clears throat> make sure that contours that are 
receiving direct amounts of light are very light and very clean. You can use your uh, click eraser to clean that up. Go around, make sure any jaggedy edges. Are cleaned up. I'm going to be using uh, the medium pencil. Now the contour lines that you draw need to work with the shadows that you've established or the lines that you've established. The One of the goals of this rendering drawing is that you want the rendering itself to actually define the shape and that the contour lines are secondary. They're only there to um, make sense, if it were, to, to add just a little bit of boundary to some of your objects. Okay. So, for instance, in this area right uh, here with the pear, where it butts up against a very, very white area, I can use a contour line very delicately, take it into the shadow and, let, and then let it lose itself in the shadow. Okay. Also along the top of the contour. Over here, I'll move it, over here along the edge of the pear where it meets the uh, salt shaker. along the edge of the contour of the handle of the pepper shaker where it runs into the shadow and then I let it disappear where edges meet some areas where it's very very dark like has a dark line I can I can put a dark line in there and there's a little divot right in there which also it's a chip so there's a little bit of light that hits in there that I'm going to include but as you can see for the most part I'm letting the the actual shapes that I've drawn determine what the object looks like for the most part. Now this is uh, far from done as far as I'm concerned so I'm going to continue but what I want to show you next in some areas is how to take care of lights and highlights. Remember that your highlights are the brightest part of an object that is receiving direct light and so they need to be the brightest bright. They need to be the white of the paper and there are a few that are in the pepper shaker but are not absolutely white white. I'm saving the brightest brights for like the top of the handle here which has a bit of light that runs down the side and there is a highlight here you can also use your kneaded eraser to get a very fine point and also to pick out some key areas. And you will do this throughout the drawing. So what I will do is I'm going to go ahead and finish this drawing uh, and then I will 
put it up at the end of this video so you can see how it comes together. But this is basically how you render with a charcoal pencil. Um, if you have any questions, just let me know and I'll do my best to answer them and perhaps help you out. But again, um, good luck with this. I, I hope this has helped you.